Okay, let's talk about the other type of convertible instrument, a safe or simple agreement for future equity. The main difference between a convertible note and a safe is that a safe is not debt, meaning it doesn't have an interest rate or a maturity date. If you receive a $100,000 safe investment, you simply pay the investor back $100,000 in your company's shares at the next price round, which sounds great, right? No interest rate. And it is great, but there are some downsides to safes too compared to convertible notes. So let's take a look at those. First off, the conversion trigger is usually a little different with safes. This could be a disadvantage for founders that need to raise just a tiny bit more capital because it may trigger the safe conversion before they're ready to actually give their investor shares. Overall though, safes have many of the same components as convertible notes. They can also come with discounts on the next price round, they can come with valuation caps, etc. Now, that being said, you may run into some nuances. Like for example, some safe investors might ask for a thing called favored nation status. This essentially means that if you talk to a different investor and give them better terms, then the first investor wants their terms to match what you gave to the other person. This can all get a little in the weeds, but it can cause some administrative challenges on your cap table and impact your level of dilution. Okay, dilution. This is a big one. Dilution is a very important concept to understand. It goes hand in hand with issuing shares in a company and manager dilution effectively is a key advantage of having a well-functioning cap table. So let's talk about it. Simply put, dilution is a reduction in ownership percentage for any individual investor, which is naturally caused by more investors entering the cap table. Think of it kind of like this. Your company is a pie. The more people taking pieces of the pie, the smaller everyone else's piece gets. Dilution is the shrinking of those pieces. An important thing to remember is that dilution is present even when it comes to convertible equity despite the fact that you haven't issued any actual shares to the investor. Think of it kind of like um, someone calling dibs on that piece of pie. They just haven't taken it off the tray yet. Here's an example. Let's say two founders start a company. They create 10 million shares and each person takes 5 million shares in equity for an equal 50-50 split. Then an early investor comes in and provides $100,000 in funding on a safe agreement. They set a valuation cap of $2 million at the next financing round. We'll talk about valuation caps in a bit, but just know that this gives the investor about 5% or so of the startup. Once the safe converts, the two founders will no longer own 100% of the company. They now own 95%, or 47.5% each. In other words, they got diluted. This is an example of how additional funding, even funding that doesn't instantly result in shares being granted, will dilute the percentage of all current shareholders, including you as the founder. Now, obviously 5% might not seem like a huge decrease in ownership. After all, you're just going from 50% to 47 and a half. But multiple financing rounds, especially ones with more investor-friendly terms, can quickly add up and seriously reduce the founder's financial stake in their own companies. And that ultimately is why a cap table is essential from day one. The only way to successfully bring on investors, retain control of your company, hire, grow, and effectively manage dilution is through a well-managed cap table. All right, that was a lot to digest, so pat yourself on the back, you're doing a great job. In the next lesson, we'll dive deeper into what goes into a cap table and what crucial things they manage. When you're ready, hop on over, let's get into it.